So have you have you had a chance to set in your championships yet? Like, do you, are you enjoying that yet or what? Always, man. Yes, we're definitely enjoying it. And um, it's, you know, but at the same time, we're we're in the gym and we're working and, and trying to get better. But, man, it's nice to go into the gym knowing that um, the, some of the hard work that you've already put in is paid off and kind of having a blueprint and an idea of what you want, to, what we want to do and build on. And it's also nice going into the gym and seeing Kenyon in there still and Hudson and David Lund and right. Yeah. So we're, we're blessed, man. It's been a good summer. Are you ever not in the gym, man? Like, do you ever <laughs> just say, Hey, I'm going to take one day off here. I mean, and you're always in the gym. Yeah. I, well, I mean, we like to be in the gym. We enjoy it. Um, I guess that's, that's why you're winning. And that's, that's it, it, we have kids that enjoy it. Like they, it's kind of part of what they do and who they are. It's not all of them. Not all of them are, are really gym guys, but when some of your best guys are, you know, and they, they really enjoy the gym. I mean, it just makes a difference. I like being in there. I grew up in the gym. My dad being my coach and, you know, my two boys are in the gym all the time. They want to go. I don't, you know, tell them to, they, they do Kenyon's in there quite often, you know, it's just, you know, we have a lot of kids that really enjoy being in there. But we do rest, like we do take time off, like that's important too. Because if you're in there for the wrong reasons and it's and it's it's uh, mundane and it feels like a chore, then you don't get better. So we do we do really try to get some time to recover. Well, you you've been known like as like a mad scientist almost with this, like yeah. from stories and just from talking to you and just you know from knowing like you put so much time into game planning and making sure everyone understands what they want to do. Like your regimen of of leading up to game time. It it feels, it feels like a lot feels like it's almost like at a professional level, the way that you take this, obviously it's been super successful. Have you been told that it's, it's a lot like all of, all of the, the planning and the gym time. Have you been told that? Yeah, all the time. And you know, it's, it is just who it it's just who I am like I I want to be if anything over prepared and instead of under prepared and being able to pull back I've learned as I've gotten older to 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 not do as much in certain areas but at the same time be who I need to be and like you know going into the games like you know these state tournament games or district big games we do want to have make sure that we have you know, like our plans, like not just a plan A, but, you know, a plan B and a plan C. And so when we go into halftime, we, you know, and it's, and I say we, I, you know, my coaching staff, Cuevas and, and, you know, just, I got this great coaching staff, Frank Smith. He's a guy that's been with us forever. I'd name them all, but those guys are huge for us. Uh, David Cuyote has been helping us out. Um, but, so we go in there and we have an idea of what we want to do through through preparation. And so we expect our kids to be prepared. So as coaches, we we need to as well. So like this summer, I I, I saw you went somewhere. Did you went with the team somewhere, right? This summer? Yeah. I saw. What was that yeah. like? Went to my alma mater. We went to Oklahoma Christian. It's where I graduated from and my brother as well. So our boys, our teams went up there and and it was last weekend and we competed in their team camp and it was super competitive. We, uh, we won our games, but you know, we're full strength. We had everybody, I mean, somewhat, it was really our first tournament back together. First time we played since the, the Oregon mountain game in the pit where we had everybody, but, um, we played Oklahoma's best teams and won a couple games by maybe eight to 10 and won one game by one. It came down to the last possession. Played a real that physical. Surprise me! Like I wanted to see this, especially this group and and how good it's been. And obviously, you won three in a row. But I, I've I've been telling everyone this. I think if you were to play out of state, like in regular season, or or even were a part of some of the national tournaments that were involved, I'm curious how you'd stack up because it's not just really good players, but it's like the. I guess the system in, in which you play and the way your team defends. Some teams in the nation just have really good talent and they could just run up and down the court like a lot of California teams do that. Yeah. I feel like they'd really struggle with a tough system that you run. And also, you got a few D1 players as well. So, 
I'm curious. Like, I what do you think? I'm not saying this is like a national championship team or anything, but I'm I'm thinking they really actually could compete. Do you feel that? Well, we're gonna see next week. We go to section seven, and they put us in a bracket where we have some of the top 100, maybe top 50 teams in the nation that we're playing against. And, um, and we played against these teams in the past. So um, we are going to see some guards that are like the size of David Lund, like point guard type of guys, you know, and we're going to see some post guys that are bigger than Kenyon, maybe as skilled as Kenyon. We're looking forward to that. You know, we're going to see some teams and some coaches and some systems that are pretty high level. And so, we're, we're preparing this week and next week for that. Um, I think we can match up. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, we got to be able to shoot the ball well, and we're, we're working on that, you know, and um, we got to be able, we, we're not going to be able to go in and have game plans for all these teams because we don't know these teams very well. So, you know, that's going to be a, a, a different thing as well, coaching. And so, but we'll see how we match up. We look forward to it. You know, it, it's the physicality. And the size when you leave New Mexico, that's the difference. And that's what, um, you know, we, we need to be prepared for. So that that's coming up here in a couple weeks. That's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Is, is that like, is this, you think, like a team that's pretty much set for, you know, coming to your high school area? I mean, I know there's always maybe kids that come in and surprise you and tryouts obviously always have to happen. That's still a ways away. But do you feel like this is like the solid group of what you're going to be bringing into this next season? Yeah, we I do. The, the focus right now is our, our next group and the, the group after that and and how kind of fortunate they are to be able to go against these guys every day. And so getting the next um, guys ready is important for us. And, you know, um, that's to keep this thing going, because when when this great group of seniors next year graduate, we got to keep this thing moving. And and that's everybody's responsibility. And so. That's where our focus is. But in terms of our, you know, our five, our top six, seven, uh, we have a pretty good understanding of who those guys are going to be. Hi, folks. Marley Fletcher here, owner of Santa Fe Kia. Santa Fe Kia is a proud sponsor of the 75th annual Rodeo de Santa Fe. We can't help you move your livestock, but we can help you move your tack and your family. Contact Jairo Gutierrez for a home and auto quote today. So we talked a little bit about, you know, three state championships in a row. It's, it's wild to think about. It means that you have a program, though. It's not just a one really solid season, um, which I find interesting. But I was talking about this the other day with somebody, and I said, you know, out of the three championships, the most nerve in a row, the most nerve wracking one, it has to be that first one, right? Like that is so easily could have gone the other way against Las Cruces. And, and by the way, like you couldn't ask for a better environment. Easy. You couldn't ask for, you know, a better situation with two undefeated teams, D1 players on one side and, and a lot of good talent on your side. Like talk about the, I guess, maybe the difference in nerves of that one compared maybe to the others. So they all have nerves. Like they're all, um, you know, those those state championship games. All they're very similar in terms of how we prepare for them um, with different teams. Even though the last two years the teams have been pretty consistent with Hudson and Ryan and Kenyon and and um, you know those guys kind of being the the main guys. But that that first one in twenty twenty two is my daughter's senior year. It was. Um, Caden and Jaquan and and Jaden Malone and Oscar. We had such a solid senior class. Um, and we go into that that game undefeated. And on the other side of the bracket is 
the other team that's Las Cruces, who's undefeated with, with Deuce and Isaiah Carr. And so we looked at it like, man, this is going to be fun for, for, for New Mexico basketball. Two undefeated teams, one and two, playing in the state championship game. We knew that Pitt would be rocking. I thought we played pretty well for about three and a half quarters. And usually that last quarter is when we kind of put our foot on the gas and we tire people out. And for some reason that happened to us, we got tired out. Our foot went off of the gas and that's when Deuce and, and uh, Isaiah started doing their thing. And little, little did I know, like we were holding on for dear life. Jaquan Hill hits those free throws to put us into overtime before and gave that, us new life. Before yeah. that car had, had a, this alley-oop dunk yes. that in the place went, absurd right whoever was yes. for las cruces was there a moment of doubt maybe there because it was like yes. oh man it's a full possession actually i think it was yes. a two possession game and less than a minute to go there was and it was like i can't lie it was discouragement because i felt like we were playing i, th- I felt like we were playing well and i loved our chances against them but we could not at that, that last quarter, we were taking some silly shots. We missed shots that we normally make. Oscar fouled out. We had some weird lineups, you know, and, and you know, Jaquan and Deuce both had high turnovers that game. It was a weird game. We didn't shoot it well. And, but I tell you, man, we got into overtime. I, we felt great. Like we felt like this was going to be it. And, and then, of course, um, I think Isaiah fouled out, um, Carr fouled out, and but um, it was a it was a very surreal game. You know, that was the first year I coached without my dad and all the purple, and and it was it was a very very special night, and for many reasons, I felt like the the situation had to feel familiar though the next season not in a championship against Oregon Mountain who you end up playing this year. But, I mean, they almost had you, like, dead to rights in the last couple minutes, yeah. right? I mean, I don't know how many – you probably know. How many straight turn or, or turnovers did you get off the inbound? They couldn't inbound the ball. Yes. Yeah. So we – um Kenyon flagged, and we did a great job of denying every pass inbound. And we, we practiced that, but – that game was one where it just never felt like we could get comfortable and Oregon mountain were they're hitting tough shots on us. And they, they, I thought deserved to win that game. Super glad we got that done, you know, cause we never gave up. And like Anthony Gonzalez was one of our seniors that year. And he just made huge plays, made a huge steal and, and to got a, a pass to Kenyon who finished. And, but we, um, Man, when we survived that one, you know, it was one of those deals where we're like, okay, we liked our, our matchup with Sandia, even though we knew it was going to be a, a huge game and a tough game. But that Oregon Mountain game, it it was a tough one. But I'll tell you what, this past year playing Oregon Mountain twice, they had our attention. We went down and played them at their place like the second or third game of the year, and our guys were ready. And then when we played them in the state championship game, I thought we had a, a really nice game plan and we played well in the second half. And But, you know, a lot of respect to them. And then this last year felt like there was, it, it felt like there was always, look, you said in the fourth quarter, you kind of wore teams out. It seemed like every game, it kind of went that direction. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I mean, we're not going to be in this gym for nothing, you know, and we, we, uh, we have moments in our practice that it's they're very difficult. Not every practice, but we believe in our cardio and you know, we get after it and and we get pretty uncomfortable with our cardio and then we challenge our guys to be able to execute while tired and still be able to process and be a great teammate and know what we're doing even when you're fatigued, you know. And so we kind of take pride in those tough moments in our program, whether it's whether it's that, you know, fighting through fatigue or, you know, some of our recovery, doing ice and, you know, stuff like that. You know, anything that's difficult, we try to take pride in together, knowing that, hey, this is going to prepare us for the pit. This is going to prepare us for Oregon Mountain or Crucis or Sandia. And and so um, 
You know, it's something that our guys have bought into, or it's going to prepare us for not having David Lund in a district game or Kenyon getting in foul trouble in one of our big district games, you know? And so that's the big thing about us is we want to be prepared for, for those hard moments, you know, and, and they can reveal themselves in many different ways. And, but the bottom line is we have to be ready to, to be uncomfortable. What is it like at the Browns house, like on a Friday night? I mean, what is there? I feel like you guys are just like get mad at the dinner table and go have a free throw shooting contest or something. Uh -huh. And that's from your daughter and your two sons. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, what's the, what's the competitiveness like in this household, man? I take us behind the scenes. So Kennedy, usually on a Friday night, she has her phone and she's doing a TikTok. I'm um, just trying to, and she's trying to make us do these TikToks with her. Nobody wants to do them with her, but she's like, can I do this part? And then my wife is usually like, she's the workhorse, man. She's like doing dishes or like she's cooking some good me meals. The boys are like staggering around because they're tired from the week. So they're like, um, you know, probably, you know, they're finishing food and, and trying to, chill out a little bit you know um you know they got uh friends that they like to hang out with but um usually on a friday night there's not a lot of competitiveness because it's been going on that week in practice or in the games you know and so when they come home we try to relax a little bit they got their chores to do they got to take care of. we have two dogs magic his name's magic johnson brown and the other one's name's mamba john mamba black mamba mamba and um he uh so we got to take care of those guys too you know they they think these dogs are people but um you know we try to we try to have a good time and be low-key and you know enjoy our time that's our recovery time that's our rest time okay well and, and, and you two boys i'll tell you man i i know i got a boy that's the same age as, as houston and he always said from like day one how athletic he was and I know he's yeah. just an eighth grader this last year, but my goodness, I felt he came into a couple games too and just locked down. Like I think it was against Cleveland, and you had a couple players suspended. Comes yeah. in and just shuts down um, Cleveland. Got your Remy. Hey, yeah, Remy. I mean, yeah. just shut it down an eighth grader. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So I know those two have to go at it, Hudson and Houston. I know it. Growing up, they did a lot. Yeah, and and they um. They have a pretty cool relationship, you know. They they they're pretty they they support each other, but they do compete, you know. They do, but for Houston was Houston's always kind of been a big moment guy, you know. He's when he was real little, he'd come to our assemblies at Volcano, and we'd make him shoot in front of the whole, you know, the student body, and he'd shoot threes and knock them down and have people cheering for him, and you know, so these district games locking up, you know, defending Remy. And Remy's hard to guard now, like with all due respect to Remy, you know, just him stepping up and he, he hit some big shots for us this year and didn't surprise anybody, you know, his time's coming, but, um, you know, he's learned a lot from his bro. Um, they are, have a lot of similarities, but they, they're different in ways as well. So, but they're, they're PGs for sure. What is, what is like your go-to, if you had to pick one, like basketball movie, what's a basketball movie that's you're all in on? Um, the best movie we watched Hoosiers together during, I think that was COVID. Um, but I tell you, man, the best movie, it's not, it's remember the Titans. We love that one. I watched that one in class and we made that one. It's a great one. And now what we're watching, I don't watch a lot of movies. Like we're not, the boys will watch some movies, but I'm not a movie guy, but we watch the UFC all like we love the UFC. So if it's a fight night, we ain't, we're not missing a fight night. In fact, there's some documentary or something on on uh, one of these channels that we're watching. It's behind the scenes scenes with UFC and just the fighters' lifestyle and you know all that kind of stuff. It's it's my getaway. They're a little more balanced. They watch other things and stuff, but our thing together is our family. We well, the boys and I, we love the UFC stuff. That's brilliant. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. Greg Brown, the Greg Brown. Appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. The real deal.